What we're simply doing is we're plugging in g of x into f of x. So f of x is equal to x squared minus 1, and g of x is equal to square root of x minus 1. So let's look at the domain restrictions. Here, there's no domain restrictions. Here, we have domain restrictions of 1 to infinity. So as I mentioned, if you're plugging a function into another function, you have to remember that domain restriction. Not for the one you're plugging into, but the one you're plugging in. So when I do f of g of x, that's basically saying taking g of x, squaring it, and then subtracting 1. Does everybody at least see that as far as that notation? You don't need to show that, but I'm showing it to make sure that everybody understands. So therefore, we have x minus 1 squared minus 1. Now, as I go ahead and simplify this, I'm just going to get x minus 1 minus 1, which is equal to x. Now, I want you guys to see this. This is very, very important. Yes? It is x minus 2. Thank you. That wasn't supposed to happen. We'll get those later. Um, but anyways, if you guys look at this, this now, the combination of them gives you another line, right? Gives you a line, correct? And the domain of a line is going to be all real numbers. However, that is not the domain of f of g of x. Because what we have to do is we have to keep in mind, we have to keep in mind our domain from our function that we plugged into this. So even though the domain looks like it's just a line, it actually is a function, though, that is still restricted. That is still restricted. Even though once we plugged it in and simplified it, it got simplified to this, we have to still include the domain of that original function, which is 1 to infinity. So we can't just disregard a domain restriction that we plugged into another function. OK? Can't just disregard it. We've got to make sure we include that as well. So that is one way that um, composition is a little bit different.